Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. The US has handed over the 1.2 trillion chip market. In order to curb the development of China's semiconductors, the US launched a tariff war, but it didn't want to shoot itself in the foot. Allies defected, companies turned to the Chinese market, and the former semiconductor hegemony faced collapse. Can the US's desperate gamble turn the tide or accelerate its own decline? This tariff war may reshape the global semiconductor landscape, but who will be the final winner? In April this year, the global economy was not very prosperous, but the United States ignited a fire, the tariff war. On the surface, it was to reduce the trade deficit, but in fact it wanted to reshape the global semiconductor industry chain and suppress China's technological development. U.S. Secretary of Commerce Raimondo said that he would exempt some electronic products from tariffs and then launched a new investigation. The erratic policy exposed the U.S.'s anxiety in the semiconductor industry chain. The United States still has some advantages in chip design and manufacturing equipment, but the overall industry chain has been out of control. The Asia-Pacific region, especially China, has formed a complete industrial cluster from raw materials to packaging and testing, which is the real concern of the United States. China has already taken an advantage in low-end and mid-range chips, and even the 14 nanometers process yield is close to TSMC. High-end chips have also been reported frequently, and smartphone chips have been localized. In order to regain the chip manufacturing position, the United States launched the Chips and Science Act and offered huge subsidies to try to pull the industry back to the mainland. However, Huge subsidies cannot solve the fundamental problem. By 2025, the United States' share in global wafer manufacturing is expected to be only 8%, while China has formed an overwhelming advantage in the field of low-end and mid-range chips. The United States not only provides subsidies, but also takes trade restrictions, imposes high tariffs on China, and tries to prevent the Netherlands' ASML from selling high-end lithography machines to China. This approach of blocking technology and seizing the market is not only ineffective, but also puts allies in a dilemma. Samsung of South Korea and ASML of the Netherlands are both highly dependent on the Chinese market. This move by the United States not only pushed its allies to the opposite side, but also exposed the fragility of its own semiconductor industry chain. Its packaging testing and raw material supply all rely on Asia. The cost of building a wafer factory in the United States is much higher than that in Taiwan, and there is also a serious shortage of engineers. Even if TSMC builds a factory in the United States, Chinese engineers are needed for equipment debugging, and the so-called industrial repatriation is difficult to achieve. China did not sit idly by in the face of the United States' step-by-step -step pressure. On the one hand, China has increased research and development, from mass production of 90 nanometers lithography machines to etching machines entering TSMC's 3 nanometers production line, to independent research and development of EDA tools. China's chip industry has become more dynamic under the blockade. On the other hand, China has actively laid out the global market and bypassed the US tariff barriers through the Made in China assembled in a third country sold in the United States model. New electronics factories in Mexico, Vietnam, 
and other places are assembling mobile phone motherboards and chips from China. The U.S. tariff stick hits cotton. The U.S. technological blockade has accelerated the debutification of China's semiconductor industry. SMIC's revenue for processes above 28 nanometers increased by 82% year-on-year, and Huawei's Kirin chips 7 nanometers technology also broke through the EUV lithography limit. China's semiconductor patent applications have increased by 47% against the trend under the blockade, all of which show that the myth of the U.S. semiconductor hegemony is shattering. What the United States did not expect was that this tariff would trigger a global anti-American wave. The European Union also imposed a 25% tariff on the United States, Japan secretly exported photoresist to China, and ASML of the Netherlands delivered immersion lithography machines to Yangtze memory despite the ban. The United States wanted to use the SWIFT system to sanction Chinese semiconductor companies, but the CIPS direct connection channel built by China handled a large number of transactions. The 10 ASEAN countries jointly condemned the United States for disrupting the global supply chain. Volkswagen of Germany transferred its chip orders to SMIC, and the Tata Group of India even wanted to build a wafer factory with China Electronics Technology Group. The United States' former allies have turned against each other and are becoming increasingly isolated. China's annual chip demand of 1.2 trillion yuan is enough to feed the entire European semiconductor industry. The deduction results of American think tanks also show that the result of the tariff war is the shrinking of the US GDP, unemployment in the semiconductor industry, and the growth of China's chip exports. This situation of killing 1,000 enemies and losing 800 has even caused differences within the Republican Party of the United States. The United States is anxious about the semiconductor industry because its logic of technological hegemony is no longer feasible. The United States used to control the global industrial chain by relying on its technological advantages. Now, the rise of emerging economies such as China has broken this monopoly. The United States wants to maintain its hegemony through a tariff war, but it ignores the interdependence of the global industrial chain and market laws. The tariff war launched by the United States is more like a gamble on the fate of the United States. Historical experience tells us that a gamble that violates the law will eventually fail.